The economy is terrible right now. Now is not the time to make big financial decisions. The job market, oh my God, the job market, especially in tech, it's crazy pants right now. Now is not the time to go on the job market. I think I should just keep my job, stay safe. These are things that, if you haven't heard them yet, um, you probably will soon, and I know that a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the question that I want to ask you on today's podcast is, do you want to accept those as truth and that there's no other alternative? Or do you want to lean into another truth, which is it's not the economy superhero. It's not the job market superhero. Nothing external is keeping you from what you want. What's keeping you and how do you move forward despite the very real challenges that are happening right now in the world? I'm here to help you move on. Stay tuned. It's not the economy superhero. I borrowed that from that old saying, it's the economy stupid. Turned it on its head and I made it even better. <laughs> because it's actually not the economy uh, that's keeping you from anything that you want. And I would never call anyone stupid because our words are our spells and I encourage you all to cast very wisely. So let's look at the reality of the situation for a moment, shall we? Because this is not an invitation to stick your head in the sand. This is not an invitation to ignore the very real challenges, the very real reality, the very real environment, economic environment, financial environment, job market environment, environment that we're in right now. It's not an invitation to ignore it. It's an invitation to see it and then make a decision from a place of power and not from a place of fear. So what is the current situation? Well, as I record this, I'm not gonna go deep into it, honestly, but I just want you to know that I'm like, I get it, right? The economy right now, yeah, it's been better. It's been better. And there's a lot of people out there waving their fear wands and talking about the doom and gloom. Some of it's overhyped, for sure. But even if you go past the overhypedness of it, there are some things going on with the economy financial-wise, like finan global financial systems, US financial systems that are worse than they were in recent years. Worse, worse than they were, and maybe even depending on what metric you're using, may, you may even be able to make a, a data-based argument, like a factual argument, that it's worse than it's ever been. That's true. And also, like the job market. The job market, the job market right now, particularly in tech, is crazy pants. The best word that I can use to describe it. It's crazy pants. Um, we have our finger on the pulse of this, perhaps more than others, because we're, you know, we're not just one person on the job market. So don't, <laughs> like, don't, like, get your data on what's actually going on in the job market, job market just from one person, right? That's that's anic data. That's not even data. That's just some one person's um, experience of it. I'm not. I'm not um, negating anyone's experience of it. I'm not saying that anyone's experience, like whatever anyone says that they're lying or whatever it is, but it's like if you wanna get a sense of what's going on at a bigger level, you have to talk to dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of people, or at least have your finger on the pulse of that. 
And Rob and I, because of what we do as uh, career and life coaches for technical leaders, because of what we have done in previous lives and the network of people that we are connected to in tech and other areas. Yeah, the job market is crazy pants right now. Um, there's, you know, depending on what sector you're talking about, but like particularly, you know, in the realm that we're most familiar with, which would be like tech leadership kinds of positions, although this is true to a certain extent for other kinds of tech positions as well, is that there are way more people on the job market right now than there are jobs. And it's causing fear. And it's causing people to make decisions from a place of fear, from a place of scarcity. And this is all true. This is all true. Acknowledge it, and I invite you to acknowledge it powerfully. And what I also invite you to do is to look at the other side of this. That, yes, that's a truth, right? What, what is also true? What is also true is that there's always something external that's bad if you wanted to find it. There's always something external that could be in the way if you wanted to find it. Whether it's in the economy, the job market, your boss, the organization that you work for, the people in your life, there's always, 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 without exception, something external that you can point to and say, I don't like that, that's bad, that's in the way. You could always find something if you wanted to. Is that where you want to live? Is that where you want to make career decisions from? From that place of saying, there's all of this bad, chaotic stuff happening, and so therefore, I'm just going to stay put? I'm not going to take any action? Does that really feel empowered? I encourage each of you to really feel into that one. Really notice if you're doing that. Are you staying at a job, for example? That's terrible. Or are you staying at a job that's even just OK because you're afraid of going on the job market? Because you don't think there's anything better? Are you settling because you're scared of something new? Are you pointing to all of the external things that are in your way and using them as excuses? We've all done it. So if you're like, no, 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 I don't do excuses. I encourage you to get really, really curious with yourself. Where are you making excuses in your life? Where are you pointing to something external and using as that, that as the reason why you're not moving forward? The economy is terrible right now. The economy is, yes, that's true, and the economy is external to us. The economy is terrible right now, so I'm not going to buy a house. The economy is terrible right now, so I can't, I can't go out to dinner. I've heard it. It sounds so crazy, but I've heard humans say these words. And why it resonates is because we've all been there. We can't go out to dinner tonight. I'm sorry. The economy is terrible. Right? <laughs> Feel how disempowering that is. The money may actually, more than enough money, may actually be in your bank account. You may have so much resourcefulness and so many resources flowing to you currently and will flow to you in the future. And yet you're like, yeah, you know what? We gotta play it safe. We, we, we should eat in tonight. Or something similar to that that's like a small decision or a big decision. Like, we can't move to this other state, to this other country, to this other place because the economy is terrible right now. It's the same thing. 
It's disempowering. I can't go on the job market right now. I can't ask for a raise right now. I shouldn't ask for more money right now because the economy is terrible, because the job market is bonkers. Never, ever, ever let external circumstances determine your destiny. You're the determinant of your ultimate destiny. Get back in the driver's seat. Some of you are noticing right now that you've been letting external forces drive the bus. You've been letting external forces pilot the ship of you, the, the ship of your life. You've been letting external forces do that. Cut it out. Cut it out. I say that with love because you are a powerful, amazing, badass technical leader. I'm inviting you, I'm re-inviting you to own the shit out of that. So it's not the economy. It's not the job market. It's not your boss. It's not the organization that you work for. It's nothing external to you that's keeping you from what you want. It's nothing external to you that's keeping you from what you want. It's all internal. What do I mean by that? There's really two, two parts to this. And I really want you to pay attention because I've not said this in this way before. So I really want you to receive this. It's all internal. Everything that is keeping you from what you want is internal. Let that one sink in for a moment first. You're keeping you from your dreams. Yes, that's the truth. And notice the emotions that come up when you fully allow yourself to embrace that truth. It could be even harder to embrace than the economy is terrible right now and the job market is bonkers. It's easier to feel the fear of the job market is bonkers and the economy is terrible right now than to feel all the feelings, including fear of it's not the job market superhero, it's me. I encourage you to do this from a place of self-love, from a place of self-acceptance, from a place of neutrality for yourself and others, from a place of empowerment. It's me. I'm in my own way. I always have been. I'm the one. I'm the one that's in the way. So let's break this down. I've not said it this way before, so I really want you to pay attention. What do I mean by it's all internal? What do I mean by me? Define me, please. Please give me a mental model for this because I want to embrace it, but in, in order to really completely embrace it, I need a mental model for it. Here you go. Here's your mental model. It's your mindset and it's your heart set. It's both of them. So what's in the way? It's all internal. Specifically, it's your mindset and it's your heart set. So what's in the way of you creating your dream career and living the life of expansion and joy and love and light and prosperity? What's in the way of you fully doing that even more? Your mindset and your heart set. Your mindset, what's your mindset? It's what's between your ears. It's that real estate inside your skull. Those neural connections, those neural pathways, which come in the form of thoughts, thought patterns, beliefs, memories, programs, internal thought programs. It's that, that's the mindset. What is the dominant 
two or three or four or five or ten thoughts that you think on any given day. You might want to write that down. What are the thoughts? What is the mind chatter that's in your brain? What are the two or three or five or ten thoughts that come to your mind most often on any given day? Write them down, look for patterns. So these are the, what I'm talking about are the reactive, that this isn't the, I'm going to sit down intentionally and think about my life and connect to purpose, and here's the thoughts that come. We're not looking for the right answers here, guys. This is the knee jerk. This is what comes to your mind as you're falling asleep. This is what comes to your mind as you're taking a shower. This is, com- this is what comes to your mind when you're meditating and your mind wanders. This is what comes to your mind when you're taking a shower and you'd rather be thinking about that dream house, but instead, what are the dominant thoughts? What are the dominant thought patterns? or the dominant beliefs that are at the forefront of your mindset. Write them down. And if they're disempowering, what does disempowering sound like? Well, the obvious ones like, I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. But it's also other ones that aren't connected to your true power as a human. Like, I don't know if I can do this. What if this doesn't work out? We need to worst case scenario plan this. What if this, what if that, what if the, any, what if the other thing? What if, insert bad thing here, I can't do this. I won't do this. Why do I keep procrastinating? Why do I keep avoiding doing the thing that I know I meant, that I know I should do? It could also be anger, right? It could also come from a place of anger, like, why don't people understand me? Why can't I get them to do the thing? All of these are disempowering. Because you're not coming from that true place, that true place of (sighs) compassion and love and certainty and curiosity and courage and confidence and clarity and calm and connectedness. If they're not connected to those traits, to those feelings, they're disempowering. So notice, If the vast majority of the mind chatter that comes up spontaneously for you is disempowering, then you have work to do. You have work to do. How great to notice that. How amazing to notice that. What an opportunity to notice that. And that's absolutely part of what we help our clients with, by the way, in case you're wondering. So mindset and heart set. So number one is mindset. That's one thing, one one part of the thing, the internal thing that's in the way. Then there's heart set. So what is your heart set and how can it be in the way? It's really more here about the emotional overtones of your day. And it's also simultaneously, and it's in the same bucket because they're absolutely related to one another, it's simultaneously your connection or disconnection from source, from source energy. So if you are disconnected from source energy, and or if you are feeling disempowering emotions as a rule, then that's going to keep you from creating the amazing, joyous, prosperous life that you want, life and career that you want. So what I'm asking you to do here is notice 
What are the emotions that I typically feel on a day-to-day -day basis? You might want to capture them. And if the, your emotional home, which would be like the emotions that you feel most of the time are disempowering, and you have work to do. What are disempowering emotions? Anything that feels bad. Anger, fear, guilt, sadness, disgust, worry, anxiety, anything like that. They're disempowering. What does that mean? They are disconnected from your power as a human, from your resourcefulness, from your connectedness, from your courage, from your strength, from your power as a human. And the goal, by the way, whether we're talking about emotional home, whether we're talking about our mindset home, is for those thoughts and those emotions, generally speaking, to be empowering. And yes, you can get there. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Does it require work? Yes. Is it going to happen overnight? Probably not. But can you get there? Yes. Can you get to a place where the predominant mind chatter is either neutral or positive? Can you get to a place where the predominant mindset home is, I got this. Yeah, I got this. Is it going to be a little tricky? Yeah, but I got this. It's handled. Everything's always working out for me. I know how to do this. Wow, this is new. All right, game on. That can be the predominant mind chatter. It absolutely can be. In terms of emotional home, can your emotional home, the predominant like, average of emotions that you feel on a day-to-day -day basis be joy, gratitude, happiness, expansion, peace, love? C can those be the dominant emotions? Excitement, delight. Can those be the dominant emotions? Yeah, they can be your emotional home. Your emotional home and your mindset home can absolutely be predominantly empowering, resourceful, connected to your source. That's what resourceful means. We're going back to source. Resource. Source again. Go back to source. Source energy. That's why that's related. So. When you're living in this, this home, this, this, this new mindset home, this new emotional home, it doesn't mean that you don't occasionally take a trip to scare city, to scarcity, to fear, to I'm not good enough, to can I really do this, especially when you're surrounded by new, amazing, intense challenges, which is what's going on for some of you right now amidst the new, amazing, intense challenges of the job market and the economy and whatever else is going on more local to you in your life, ooh, pay attention. It's time for a mindset and a heart set upgrade. It was good before, it was great, but now the challenges are challenging you to rise to the occasion and like shore up that emotional home even more, that mindset home even more. And so getting back to the heart set piece of it, the heart set, you can tell what your heart set is by how you feel. That's the easiest way to know what your heart set is. And if it's not, on average, usually most of the time, an empowering heart set, then you get to do the work. To switch it, to shift it. This, the other way to feel this, and for some of you this is going to resonate more than others, but I'm going to say it because it's so important for the ones that it resonates with. It's going to resonate so deeply. This is the thing that's going to make you really, really, really get this and experience it. How much are you connected to source? How much are you connected to source energy? How consistently and powerfully are you connected to the divine within, to God's source? to infinite intelligence, to the Holy Spirit? How much are you connected to that thing, which we have different names for. 
depending on your religion, your spiritual upbringing, what resonates the most with you. I'm calling it source here to be more general. But yes, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the universe. I'm talking about the divine within. I'm talking about your ultimate power as a human. I'm talking about the part of you that is eternal, that is connected to the universe, which is eternal. How much and how consistently are you connected to that? And for many of you, it's an invitation to reconnect, to resource, to get back to source, to connect to the ultimate resource. That's also a way to know that your heart set. We may, may even have a third one here that we would call soul set, right? Mindset, heart set, soul set. If that resonates with you, yeah, add it. Go ahead and add it. So if your mindset isn't dialed in, if your heart set isn't dialed in, and or if your soul set is not dialed in, you're not going to get what you want. Not consistently, not as quickly as it could happen. And now, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to make anybody wrong. I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to invite you to the truth of what you already know. I'm here to invite you to connect to the truth of what you already know. If this is resonating, it's because you already know this. You simply needed a reminder, a powerful reminder, a powerful kick in the pants of who the hell you really are. Reconnect to who the hell you really are and stop making excuses. Get out there and be the superhero because it's not the economy superhero. It's not the job market superhero. It's not your boss superhero. It's nothing external to you. Get out there, reconnect to your purpose, to your source, and go get them. And like I said, for a lot of you, you're identifying that there's some work to be done here. And you want help with that. And we're here to help. So if you are a technical leader who is devoted to excellence as a leader, devoted to excellence in your career, and you want to get to the next level, and you're looking for a guide to help you to do that, and that's what we're here for. And if you want to find out more, please go ahead and book a call with us, thepeoplestack.com slash book. And we're going to have an amazing conversation with you about what's going on, about what's not working in your career right now. And we're also going to have, as part of that conversation, a fun back and forth about where you want to go. What is the dream you want to build? You're going to get immense clarity as long as you show up coachable, as long as you show up as your superhero. And even if you're not feeling like you can 100% connect to that superhero right now, I still want you to book that call if there's an inner wanting. Like, I want this. There's a desire for this. I'm just not sure how. I got mindset work to do. I, got, I, I have heart set work to do, and I have soul set work to do, and I need help. We're here for you. We're here for you. So you're gonna get that clarity. And then, if we're 100% confident that we can help you, that we are the best, the absolute best guides to take you on this journey towards your dream, your dream career, your dream life, then we'll talk about what it would look like. And we'll talk about all of the details. It's always your choice. So again, to book the call with my team, to assess whether or not it's a fit for us to work together, and to, to, get, to get clarity on steps forward, the link to book that call is thepeoplestack.com slash book. Reconnect to your superhero. If anything else, that's what I'm saying. 
reconnect to your inner superhero. And if you can't, if you won't, if you don't want to, that's, that's cool, that's fine. But if you want to and you don't know how, make sure you get the help that you need. You're not in this alone. You're not in this alone. Even superheroes need a team. Aloha, much love. Talk to everybody soon.